I'm going to share a little walkthrough of how I organize my reference material in GTD. So we're looking at this branch of the GTD tree. And I want to show you specifically the para method, which is something I learned from Tiago Forte, which is very GTD-esque, but it's uh, a system for organizing non-actionable, potentially actionable information in digital notes. So let's talk a little bit about the para method. Um, para stands for projects, areas, resources, and archives. And the whole idea is that projects are the most actionable category of organization and archives are the least actionable. And so there's a continuum here where when you get a piece of reference material that, that isn't an action in and of itself, it's something that could potentially be used for action. You put in the projects folder. And then if it's something that has to do with standards to be maintained, you put in the areas folder. And if it's a subject of interest, like psychology, philosophy, math, whatever, just things that you're interested in, you put them in your resources. And then whenever there's stuff that you just don't want to throw away that you're done with, like for instance, if you finish a project, you move it to archives. So I'm going to show you what this looks like. And I've also left some tabs open in my browser so I can use them as examples for how I would organize them in a para system. And I'll start by going to my GTD app, which I use things. So this is just standard GTD. There's an inbox here. Uh, there's the next actions. They call them anytime. There's someday, maybe. All my projects are on the left-hand side. I'm not sure if you're familiar with this app, but this is my personal favorite. And then all my areas are over here. And then for my digital notes, my, my knowledge management or my second brain, I use Evernote. So this is Evernote to the right. You'll notice some similarities. So there's an inbox, which is the same as, as just a, an in basket, but for reference material, as opposed to actions. And then there's these two listen later and watch later inboxes. So this is if somebody sends me a podcast that I, I'm going to listen to later, I'll put it here or a YouTube video, I'll put it here. And then you have para. So projects, areas, resources, and archives. You can ignore these. This is just stuff that I need to organize. There's also someday maybe here. Um, and a stack is just a collection of notebooks. I don't know if you're familiar with Evernote. So I apologize if this is just very basic, but each of these are notebooks that are associated with projects. And you'll notice it's not one-to-one, -one, but there's projects here in my GTD system that have corresponding notebooks in my Evernote. So for instance, I'm planning a trip to Portugal. And so I have like a bunch of emails and stuff related to the trip. And I have a little notebook here. I'm also renting out my house. So I had to like apply for uh, rental agreements and things like that. So these are all my notes associated with my Portugal trip and here, I don't really have that many actions remaining, but you can see how I, I can work between these two places to achieve the outcome of the trip. This actually should be later. So let's, uh, let's, let's come back to areas. Um, the same, the same thing happens here. So it's not perfectly one-to-one -one because I'm not always updating them. But basically I have areas, I have like, you know, there's a dating area, there's a health area. I have notebooks associated with each GTD area in Evernote. Now, how, what does this look like when I'm um, organizing material online? So let's say this article is something that I want to save into my digital notes. I use the Evernote web clipper, which can take a simplified article, and then I will save it to a corresponding notebook. And in this case, this isn't associated with a specific project. This is just general productivity. So I have a productivity notebook in my resources uh, stack. So I'll just save it there. Um, often, if I don't really know where it's going to go, I'll also just save it to the inbox. That's, that's usually the default notebook. And then later, I'll process my Evernote inbox, just like how I'll process my, my things inbox, my GTD inbox. So let's just do that for now. And let me do one more example. Um, so this is uh, somebody sent me a tour of their, their flat in, in Portugal. I want to save this to my, uh, my folder related to my Portugal trip. I'll save it as a bookmark in this case, and then I'll do the Portugal project folder. I'll save it there. And now when I'm working on that project, trying to decide on a place to live, all I have to do is, is open this, uh, this notebook. 